take a look at the source code for the ampersand handler for FujiNet called Fuji Apple. And thank you to Norman Davey for adding this extension so it makes it easy for Apple computer programmers to take full control of FujiNet networking. Okay, so um, just some flags I want to point out. There's an extended trace and an extended to trace. So the uh, version of um, Fuji Apple called FujiNet.dbg1 that I include has this extended trace set on and that displays smart port internal debug messages and there's a .dbg2 which displays smart port status and smart port control and I'll show these when I test on the Apple IIc Plus but what I want to do is trace through the startup of this program so it's call it has two JSRs fill command list and set smart port dispatch address and that is the problem that I'm having on the 2C plus so let's uh, follow that through um, so there's some if defs that skip over code for debugging that's the debugger one and debugger two and uh, let's see here um, so the goal is to say that we found the smart port, we found the network. We, okay, so we're, we're having a problem finding the network device because of the numbering of the, um, net the devices on the 2C+. Plus. Um, it's non-consecutive. It goes one through four, then skips number five, then goes six. And my actual uh, device number is nine on the 2C+. Plus. Okay, so... Um, display nets. Okay, so here are more commands. Find network. This is the one that it eventually gets to. And here, um, let's see. Okay, so load basic unit compared to number one branch if it's plus to multi network. And it turns out that this code is really not needed when you only have one Fuji net. So um, I can patch it and just overwrite some of this code um, when I actually hit it. So the problem is the 2C plus is actually hitting this multi-network code. We didn't find a network or a unit number greater than zero was specified. Now look for network underscore X, like network underscore one, network underscore two. So what I want to do is debug this code on the 2C plus with the FujiNet connected to see exactly how it is falling through this JSR SP find device, which I think is in one of these, um, Fuji Apple find device. Okay, here's find error, here's found it. Um, okay, so smart port commands. Here's SP find device. So it's looking for doing a string match, a null terminated string device, and it returns A and Y and X. High byte, low byte of the string. So it's searching a string table. So it's really the this loop between here and here that I want to debug on the 2C plus. So I have figured out that FN find network is address hex 4 delta 92 or 4d92 and uh, that is um, what we're going to look at on the 2c plus so lda basic unit is lda 4 uh, foxtrot charlie baker and then it compares it with one and if it branches plus it goes to 4 delta alpha 6 multi-network okay so for Delta Alpha 6 is where we can put code to uh, hack in and uh, override. Like I could put an LDX number nine and uh, yeah, just to, that's what I've been doing to hack it. But uh, what I really want to do is fix the code that is uh, in going through the devices and skipping the bad device number five. Okay, so this is for Delta 9.2. We load um, A, we compare to one. If it's positive, we go to four delta alpha six. 
Um, otherwise, we got load 559C and 559 Baker and JSR to 4A87. So let's see, I could put a breakpoint right at 4D95 and we could just trace it from there. Um, so let's do that. So I'm going to put two zeros. So now when you do 4D92L, you have two breaks. Uh, so it should break when I run 4,000. Okay, so yes, it broke at 4D95, and then it bumps uh, two and shows 4D97. Okay, so if we are positive less than one, we go to 4D86, which is we don't want to go to. So now what we're going to do is 4D99 step. Okay, so thanks to whoever put the step and trace back into the Apple 2C, 2C plus monitor, we're able to do this now. So we can load the A with 559C and we got a CA. Then we could step again. We've got, um, let's see, LDY is now 9.3. Okay, so now we're going to jump to a subroutine. Okay, so now we're storing A and Y. Okay, load X with zero and Y with zero. Okay, so EB is a pointer now, and um, we will see what we get. A has now um, a C, a four, uh, four E. Okay. And we're going to store that in 5869 and branch if equal to 4A9B. So the accumulate, so we're looking for a zero terminated string. Okay, so we're going to increment y and go through increment x as well. Okay, so we're doing a string compare here. Clear carry, branch carry clear. That's like a forced branch always. 4A8F. So now we get the next byte. And we get a 4-5. Oh yeah, we get from a 4E to a 4-5. So it's going through all this string comparison. So what I could do is figure out how to make it break when that um, X, the number is, uh, the, when the device number equals what I want. So that's my next task. So until the permanent fix um, goes up to FujiNet, uh, GitHub, and is deployed, this is a hack for people who have a 2C plus who want to run the tic-tac-toe game. So it unlocks the four server, the four uh, game uh, tests and game uh, programs. It loads the client and changes the debug to .2CP, which is the file that has the hack saves the client, locks the client, and the same thing with the server, the game client, and the game server. Okay, let's look at our GitHub page for the project. So these are the open issues. Um, this beep will be tested today. The Z command will be retested. I'm not sure if my fix will work or not. I did add the variable for the connection beeps optional. These other things are to-dos for the future. But uh, one thing that was added to the project is um, the README was updated with a link to a test plan, which is a Google spreadsheet, which shows the different configurations of apples that I can test on and different um, test plans where I have different machines as the client and server and a list of steps to run for each of these test plans to uh, verify whether the functionality is working. And then if it's not, I can mark it on a new tab and um, yeah, raise another issue in the GitHub. So this is the table of uh, smart port devices in the FujiNet uh, system that it finds. And you can see that number five is missing and it's between FujiNet disk two and FujiNet disk three. But the network device is number nine. That's the one we really want to get. 
And now I'm going to mount a disk image called Test SP 2.0, and um, it's a smart port test program. So I'm going to boot, and uh, then I'm going to do a buy and tab over to that test. Here it is, and it's called test sp.system. And I am going to look at number five, and it is showing me that five is a duplicate of FujiNet disk two. Okay, so we need to detect that somehow. Now, um, another test, I loaded up the first four slots, all smart port drives, and I'm going to boot and then run that smart port test again. Okay, bye, and tab over, and run test sp.system, and number five, and look what happened. The device 4 is correct, that's total replay, but device 5 became a character device with total dot replay and 4 at signs, and the blocks is hex 300. And then, uh, yeah, device 6 is correct, that's the tutor for the Apple IIc Plus. So you get an idea of what we're trying to debug. Okay, uh, just to show you what happens when we do the debugging, I'm first going to set line 4 to dot dbg1 and run it. Okay, give it a port number. Okay, so now it loaded and uh, it got C50 delta, which is correct because it's uh, like a slot 5 card. And uh, then it's trying to find the network and it goes through four iterations and it gets a network device of 04040404, which is incorrect. It should be number nine. Okay, so now let's try it with debug two. Okay. Okay, now I'm slowing it down so we could look a little more carefully. There's a lot of output. So we're trying to find device network. It gets um, status, so it's checking device zero. It gets a one, one gets a two, two, three, four, and then five. Then it fails on number five. So then it tries to go into that multi-network code and it tries to find network zero. And see, so it only thinks there are five devices. So it's really when that SP status 05 message is printed that we can break it and then follow the code and see how we can skip over the bad device 5 and continue on with device 6. So you see the, that's what's causing the 40, 40, 0, 4, 0, 4, 0, 4, And then it, um, see, then it goes to the clock and there's a payload from the clock and then old hymen, new hymen. So yeah, so it's a little weird getting used to this, but uh, we know the problem. Okay, uh, so this is a hack that I did just as a proof of concept. So if you look at 4 delta alpha 6, you'll see an LDX of a number 9. So that's hard coding the device number to 9 when I hit that multi-network logic. And I saved that version as uh, .2cp, so it's going to load fujiapple.2cp, which is the third item down on the directory listing. So now let's just test this out and put in our port number. Okay, now it's waiting for a connection and I have a server running and I'm not on Wi-Fi. Okay, I just uh, had to give it a jump start, putting power to the FujiNet, uh, and uh, I'm on Wi-Fi now, and I'm going to put my port number in, and Echo server started, and now I'm going to um, have the server send something to this client, and it accepted the connection, and we have tic tac and do, and uh, we're good. So that is my hack. 
running, but it still doesn't fix the real problem, which is we want the code to skip over bad devices like that, non-consecutive devices. Okay, let's test the tic-tac-toe client on an Apple II Plus. Now, how is that done? Well, you need a special cable to a super serial card with a new ROM, or there's several other options, a grappler card or a card uh, with a smart port ROM on it. All right, but it'll run FujiNet, and you're seeing that here, so we're gonna hit escape and boot the disk. So I have my floppy drives in slot seven, and it's running a hello program that says booting slot five. It's short delay loop, so you could break out of that. And here we are. Let's configure a client. Okay, this is 6501. Now on the two plus, you got to get used to using like control I for tab and uh, little quirks like that. Okay, so we are waiting for a connection from the server. So let's run a server uh, on a server test and 192.168.1.4 and 6501 and make sure it's running and writing tick, writing tack, writing doe and it worked. So let's save the client on the 2C and let's save the server as uh, box five. Okay, and now we're gonna run the server and it should show, yeah, good. Now I'm gonna run the game on here, three, and we're gonna do some testing. Okay, we're waiting for something, so let us send uh, a kaleidoscope. Okay, so two beeps means it's successfully connected. Now I hit enter. And three beeps means it disconnected. Now I'm going to send the kaleidoscope again. Okay. And uh, disconnected again. Good. Yeah, and these beeps can now be turned off. There, there's a, a variable in the program, BP. You just set to zero if you don't want the beeps. Okay. Next. Um, let's do a dragon. Okay, and now um, you notice that um, there, it's not waiting as long as it used to. That's because I'm now using a delay loop and then forcing uh, out of the loop once I get the ACK. Okay, and uh, let's just press uh, like a W command for a NAC. Okay, so I got it sent back a NAC, no, no problem. All right, so let's do uh, music on a two plus. Okay, we're gonna stop the music and then we're gonna play the music again all the way through as another test. any key to close connection and we disconnected now by doing it this way I avoid timing issues because um, the 2 plus apparently was running slower and I would uh, like um, not I, the delay loop would finish and I wouldn't have sent the NAC back or the act back all right so let's see if we're beyond this so five uh, let's send an X Nice, let's send an O. Okay, now uh, let's see, something new. How about a dollar sign for money? Let's send it $500. Okay, now it does some random and ends on 500. How nice, and sends the act back. Let's try, um, let's see, client. Uh, let's send uh, $900. Okay, so that uh, really should be a shuffle rather than just 10 random numbers coming through. 
that that's left as an exercise to the reader, <laughs> to the programmer. Okay. Um, now let's see. We want to test. Um, okay, so if you test the dollar sign and you, yeah, it'll make sure you have to press a number one through nine. So let's give it eight hundred. So you could see it's like a little LED display. There's your eight hundred dollars. So. Basically, the server will send um, the desired amount to each client and um, it shouldn't be waiting for each client to give it an act um, that actually come right away so that the server could send it to another client. So that's an enhancement. Okay, so now let us try um, C for a category. Because uh, during the game show, it shuffles categories. So I'm going to press C, and I'm going to type a category on the server, and it sends that. And this is just showing the font that it will send, it will use to display the category name. So it's my own font that I made up. And um, the category name is shown in the bottom and it has the right bracket. So that's something that needs to change on the client to remove that right bracket if it exists. So that's more of an exercise to the student. Okay, so now let's try um, the other command, which is Q for a question. Now, I'm not sure if the client will need to get this or not in the real game, but let's just put it in there for now. So question, uh, who built the Apple one? Okay, so I just uh, sent that and look at that. The text went from the server to the client. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so I'm not sure if the uh, question would display on the screen or if it would just be a money like maybe we would just uh, send the money for $300. So then you do a uh, dollar sign command and put three and it would, uh, yeah, so then for, so the person picks the square, it shows $300 and then um, they would get a question and then if they get it right, the person at the server would have to give them an X, okay? And we can take out the beeps now. And uh, now the last command that I uh, tried to test is the Z command. Because like if I say client uh, Z, that means I'm trying to disconnect. And uh, now I say I am saying disconnecting and giving it a delay loop. But now if I try to run the client again, it's in a bad state. So let's just try this now. Okay, so now um, let's uh, try sending it an X. So the server just beeped three times and it says unable to connect error 39. And uh, no matter what command I do, um, like uh, here we go to um, a dragon, the server is beeping. The server is an Apple II GS. So that is a useful thing for testing, um, hosing your network and how you respond. I'm still not sure exactly why it's getting hosed. So I could hit control C to break out of it and I could list it on here. But uh, I want to show you in the catalog, I've added the, um, <laughs> the, let's do a cat. Meow. Okay. So, I added for your help in debugging a test sp dot system from the um, test sp dot system. Okay, and you can test your slot five on an Apple II Plus now. Look at that nine devices, and the network is device number seven. So I haven't tried CPM yet, and, or the printer or modem. I mean, the printer would be nice, like with Print Shop to uh, route to the FujiNet printer. I don't know if anyone's tried that yet. So this is FujiNet, networking on Apple II Plus hardware. So I'm not sure about the Apple II. Maybe if it has a language card, it might work. It should, but uh, Apple II without a language card is only 48K, so... I haven't played with that yet. Okay. 
Okay, now let's test the client on the Apple IIc Plus. Now, one thing I want to do is reboot it into normal speed. So that was open Apple control, escape, and reset. And now I'm going to do a PR number five, or just open Apple control, reset. Yeah, five is the internal floppy, but uh, when there is none, it goes to the next device. So now what I want to do is um, run that uh, executable script to configure the hack. So dash hack dot 2c plus, and it's going to do all this magic work of unlocking, editing the basic program, and uh, saving it, and locking all four of them. And it looks like it just did that. So now let's load uh, TTD server test as an example and list it and see that it edited line five with .2cp, hack for 2c plus. So it just configured this disk image for the 2c plus. Okay, let's rerun that hack. Hack.2c plus. And it's uh, opening and saving the programs, uh, changing the debug uh, param variable. So it loads the 2C plus version. Okay, now let's go to startup and configure a client. Okay, 6501. And let's see if the server is hosed or not. <laughs> All right, basic system. Bigger server, 192.168.1.4.6501. Okay, loading extensions, writing thick, writing pack, and writing bill. Good. So, yes, I'll make this box two. I like picking a different box number each time. All right, go to the server. Okay, we have box two configured and we are ready to rock and roll. Okay, let's save this client on the 2C plus and run the client. Okay, say your prayers and uh, it's waiting for a connection. So let's do box two, a dragon. Wow. Let's do box to some music. Okay, now, you notice that fast note, that fast rest? That's because it's running at four megahertz. So apparently the integer basic music routine does slow the CPU to get the correct music, but the delay loops are fast. So this is a good test of an accelerated Apple IIc Plus. So let's do a, okay, I stopped the music. Let's do an X. Okay, and let's do an O. And let's do some money, about $600. Ooh, look at that fast uh, acceleration of drawing. I like it. And now let's do a question. Uh, let's just, Type, uh, okay, 2Q, and uh, we'll put jobs, did. Okay, jobs did what? <laughs> he sold the whole thing. <laughs> he was an engineer too, okay. And let's do a category, uh, 2C, Apple, people. Okay, so then hopefully one day it'll print Apple people in those letters on the low res screen. Okay, and uh, what else? Uh, I think we've tested everything we wanted to. And uh, let's try the kaleidoscope. Da 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 da